This is a way they uh, grow broccoli out in California. It's twice the normal density. You only get uh, small heads, but you get by, by weight, you get twice as much broccoli out of a given space this way. Because really what this is all about is how to get the most food possible over the longest period possible out of the smallest space possible. And so we do all kinds of tricks that we've learned from other uh, growers around the country like this broccoli, which is at double the normal density and it produces a whole lot more this way. Up in Vermont where I used to garden, the tomatoes don't grow nearly as large and so I used to grow them on these teepees here and you put one plant on each leg. Uh, down here the tomatoes get bigger than that so the only ones we're doing that way are these early girls and this is just to get us the earliest possible tomatoes and once better varieties start coming in, these others we've got, then we'll probably take these out and put something else here. But they're, they're appropriate for a pyramid, uh, for a teepee still. Now the way down here to grow a tomato generally, if you're going to grow a larger one, you don't use one of those little 99 cent cages from the hardware store. You want to take some concrete reinforcing wire like this and one plant per thing, you join it up like this. And then you put a stake in so it doesn't blow over. And that one tomato plant will completely fill this cage. Now that's for the for the large indeterminate tomatoes, mostly heirlooms we grow here. And then these here are bush paste tomatoes, romas. And I was taught a trick years ago by a French grower to take the same kind of cage and to put it like that, flop it down on its side. It turns out this same relationship, the same cage will also work for beans and eggplants and peppers and anything that only gets a couple of feet tall. Because what will happen, I'll, I'll fasten it down better eventually. This is just to show. These tomatoes will grow up through here to about here and they'll drape on this cage. And that way all the tomatoes will be kept up off the ground and you'll have much less rot. And the, and the plants themselves will grow better because they're up off the ground. I'm not really going to do this for another couple of weeks because I want the tomatoes to get larger and then we're going to put down a heavy uh, grass mulch to prevent uh, early blight of tomatoes which is prevalent around here. Then we'll put the cages on. So these, except for those early girls, everything here is waiting until we put the mulch down because we'll cultivate as long as we can, keep the weeds out. Then before June 1st we'll put the mulch down and then we'll put these cages on. It's a fairly standard system. And as you can see, we have off to my left, your right, we have a bunch of these uh, milk, milk jugs that I've cut loose. And that's because when we first put a plant out, I go around on recycle day and pick these up in the alleys. And when we first put a transplant out, we just put them over that. It makes a little mini greenhouse for them. And they can even stay on on a sunny day pretty much because the milky color uh, really gives them a, a high humidity environment. If you look where my hand is, you'll see that just having it sitting there on the ground last night kept that area of the soil moist. So it's a, it's a fairly simple little system and it's recycling and it's effective.